This is a review for The Strokes latest album, The New Abnormal. It is 45 songs, 45 minutes long and nine songs long. Mm -hmm. And wow, um, The Strokes haven't made an album since like 2013, I believe. Um, because they had a deal with RCA and they were like, yeah. literally just trying to like, please get us out of this deal. Yeah, which is, I remember because isn't their last album, didn't it just have a big ass RCA on it? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Let me see. Um, right down. Oh there. yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I remember that. I'm like, why does it, I'm like, why is the company logo so big? I remember looking that up back in high school. I go, oh. Yeah, the Strokes, Oops. um, when they got big, like literally at the turn of the millennium, yes. um, they signed a five album deal <laughs> with RCA. <laughs> I can't believe they were fucking artists like that back then. Um, um, and there are ups and downs, but the Strokes really kind of made a name for themselves as being a New York-based um, rock slash alternative yes. rock band, especially led by Julian Casablanca, as we've talked about um, his contributions to um, Daft Punk and Random Access Memories. But um, yeah. led by him, uh, songs written by him a lot, but also contributing for all the other members of the band. Uh, people really liked it. It just had a really unique sound for um, alternative music at the time. And so to have mm -hmm. the new Abnormal come out right now is um, really nice and really great. And the song, I mean, the album really gets off going with um, the adults are talking. It's a, good, it's a very good opening track to yeah. suck you into the it, album. It, it really brings me back almost to like late 90s, early 2000s alt rock. It just has that kind yeah, of like but, sound Yeah, but, but with the twist, because the drum, the drums are synth drums on it. The guitar work yes. and the vocals are kind of smacked in the middle of alt, but then they added some electronic to it as well, but change it up enough to where you blend the two together. And it really did it well for that for opening track. Yeah, the synth drums really kind of bring it home in that. I really like um, how that begins. Mm -hmm. um, you want to kind of continue? Um, yeah, I genuinely like this album. Um, there's a few interesting things I have to say. Um, one was it, um, Bad Decisions, the fourth song, straight up sounds like an 80s rock anthem. Like, it just, you could throw in any big 80s band you want to that does rock songs. You could throw a New Order even, and it feels like that style of it, but more into a rock theme. Because this, remember our last podcast we talked about where there's a lot of artists who are bringing like 80s synthesizers and stuff, but I haven't heard 80s rock. I don't know too many people who are bringing that. It's usually 90s rock and stuff, but then bringing that back up and putting a modern twist to it, I go, whoa, it's kind of refreshing to hear, and I really, really enjoyed that song. The song right after that... Wait, uh, sorry, so, at one point in Bad Decisions almost sounds like dancing with myself, because you're kind of like right there. Like, and you then... Like, you could put a rock bout and on. And going into that, you have Eternal Summer, where the theme, there's one part of the theme that is exactly like um, a song from the Psychedelic Furs. Um, I can't think of the name of it. Hold on, I'll look in a second. But when I was hearing Eternal Summer, I was like, wait, why does that theme sound so damn familiar when he was going through it? Uh, but it's like exactly like... Um, Eternal well, Summer see. and Psychedelic Furs. Let's see. Eternal Summer. The, is ghost, like... the ghost in you is the song from the Psychedelic Furs. Ah. It's like... Ex like Note for note, it is the same in one part of the song. I'm like, whoa, that was trippy. Like an homage kind so, of thing. Yeah, definitely. They have to have that influence. That cannot be... It's too known, that's too well known of a song to do it as just coincidence. So. Yeah. But it's not, it's, not a, it's not necessarily a bad thing in that song because it's not the entire song. The song is six minutes long and it goes into other parts of it. Yeah, so you're not saying this is the vanilla ice world. No, 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 no. It's not, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could, but make it like a good vanilla ice award. It's weird because it's not it's 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 not YG bad, but anyways, um, no, like you, you do a cover of a I mean like you um, pay an homage to a song. There was an R and B song that like um, I, I'm not going to go into this tangent, but like, yeah. we've, you can do this well where you pay homage to old music very well. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, Eternal Summer is just like such a relaxing, um, nice, pleasurable like song to hear. Um, in the middle of the album, it really just kind of brings it all together and really makes it shine. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead. The, the, the Big thing with this album too is the um, the vocals. He's been he was using so much of his falsetto the entire album, which I don't really know him for doing the falsetto much in previous Strokes albums. Yeah, um, not too not much too, in previous Strokes albums, but like a but little like... bit here and there, but not like this. Um, but the only pro, the only uh, nitpicky thing I'll do is, is it's I have to have the, the lyrics up because it's very hard to understand him. Like, especially for the the opening track a lot. The adults are talking. I had to have the lyrics up. I'm like, I have no idea what he's saying right now. Yeah. He went straight Tom York. And I'm like, <laughs> this is mumbo jumbo, but it sounds great. So I, 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 I can't hate on it because my favorite band does that. So. Sometimes I have to um, 
mess with the EQ settings deep on my phone to like boost the vocals so uh, I can actually understand yeah. it. Um, I can definitely feel you there. Uh, why uh, at the door? Why are Sunday so depressing? Which is a hilarious title. Um, really good tracks. I love Ode to the Mets, the last um, yes. track on the album a lot. Um, because they're a New York band. If you don't know who the Mets are, the Mets are the New York Mets. They're a baseball team that I haven't done shit in years. <laughs> in a very long time. But I don't hate them, so. Um, it's good. I genuinely like this album a lot. It was, they blended a lot of sounds and stuff together to make it an alternative rock album of the new decade, for sure. This is the first alt-rock album I've heard in a long time that, Bring, that I've been that I've been wanting for a long time, where it brings the elements of so many different decades past of rock and alt rock into the modern era of bringing electronics, vocals, like synthesizers. Not, I mean, not even that much, but combining everything, but making it fresh and new. Because there's guitar solos in the, there's guitar work, but it doesn't sound so like washed out or so plain. Like I remember the last Foo Fighters album that came out. I listened to it. I'm like, oh my god, this is so boring and stuff there's not much into it but this has heart this has a lot of stuff that i've been wanting for this genre to do and this is one way to push it forward and not just copy and paste like a lot of other alt rock bands have done Foles had another good job of this as well as last year yeah. uh, but this is definitely the best representation so far i've had of I'd say having the genre of it but not making it too boring and stuff as well yeah. so. i'd say Foles took like a more um alt almost heavier rock turn with it yes and correct. the strokes took a more classic turn with it exactly because you, you're describing a bit of a mix of a little old a little i mean a little bit of through the decades and a little it really bit is new. and you, yeah um you're right it really does because you have so you have a lot that. of 80s a lot of 90s a lot of early 2000s and even some 2010s wrapped into there to where you just make this collection of an album but it's extremely coherent which is very hard to do very very hard to do in a band like the strokes they have a sound they have a very specific sound to them but they kept true to that sound while pushing forward and changing it enough to, or i should say evolving enough to make it fresh and new and i think part of the way they did that was once you get to the bucket of newer things like late um aughts tens, yes. um i think they kind of said Rather than just like copy and paste, like oh let's get a trap snare here. Yeah, exactly. Um, right? yeah. yeah, I mean that would have set Sean off. But when the first oh. thing you mentioned, if 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 they if I heard one trap snare in this, I'd be just shut my mouth. Oh but um, this. The, rather than add like too many new influences, like it's here and there. You can tell it like from right when the album starts with the synth drums and um, yes. the adults are talking. But instead of doing that, they kind of just added their sort of stroke secret sauce and mm -hmm. like keeping it to have having their sound. Definitely a good alternative album for this point right now. Um, it offers um, opportunities for growth as far as um, mm -hmm. rock and alternative can go in this decade. But we're in the early part of this decade, so a lot can happen. But uh, yeah, it's saying that it is. there are artists that can push it forward. There are artists. It can be done. It doesn't have to be so stagnant like a lot of people have been doing it. So yes, it, it's rare, but it, it, it can be done. So fantastic album. Um, Arbitrary scale this week is Postal Services, which we may have done in one other episode because I remember like comparing I, something to like DHL. I'm pretty <laughs> sure we did. Um, but it's in the news this week, and it's been at least forty episodes. So yeah, I was gonna say this is. Oh, this is a bit. I was gonna say in German DHL. When I've gotten packages in Germ from Germany quicker than I've gotten packages from Northern California, yeah. I ordered one. I, I this was I remember the story maybe. Three to 2017, I'm pretty sure. I ordered stuff from one of my favorite football teams called Borussia Mönchengladbach. Try saying that three times fast. Um, and I ordered something from Northern California, maybe a day apart or so. The things from Germany came to my door in three days. I didn't pay for expedited shipping, nothing. It came from North, um, Central Germany to my door in three days. The shit from Northern California took six days. Or at the same time. That's, that's hilarious. Pretty that's the power of German engineering, baby. DHL. <laughs> so, so this album is DHL. Yes. Um, I'll... Hmm. DHL... I get, here's what it's... Mm, this can be one of those um, reason, regional ones that like works well sometimes, but doesn't work well in other places, like On Track. Oh, okay, yeah. On, on Track is either like ridiculously good or, one or the other. It's, it's either like it comes to your house in one day pristine condition or it comes seven days late crushed yes <laughs> that's on track for you no in between and no tracking number um oh never no tracking number like yeah. you just, you just like, all right i guess it's coming sometime 